Hi, my name is Dinah Dominique. I'm the Director of Customer here at the Canadian Electricity Association. And today on the Future is Now series, we're discussing a cool project in Atlantic Canada from NB Power. Brent Staben, Director of Smart Grid Atlantic at NB Power is here with me today. And Brent, we just wanted to, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the Smart Energy Community Project? Absolutely. It's a, a fantastic little project in the town, the coastal town of Shediac, New Brunswick, the lobster capital of the world, uh, which uh, includes three key components. Uh, one is a solar farm. Uh, the second is a, a the desire to get two large buildings in the community, uh, about one megawatt load and a 300 kilowatt load to net zero over the course of the next two years. And then the third piece, a really complex piece, is a, is a residential research project where we'll be uh, deploying uh, and installing DERS in about 500 homes in the community. Uh, everything from solar panels to uh, energy battery storage to smart water heaters and smart, even smart uh, heat pumps. So uh, the the opportunity there is to work with customers to uh, understand how they can leverage that behavior to uh, or uh, understand how they can uh, leverage that technology to uh, to lower their bills. And um, we're going to introduce and test some time of rate designs. And, and really, the, the key learning is not just the technological piece, but um, how customers can adapt to the technology, how they can use that technology to their benefit, and how we as a utility need to adapt and evolve to provide the kinds of services and, and, uh, and other things that customers are going to expect from us in this new world. That sounds really cool. And it takes me uh, to the next question about that residential um, energy study. So 500 homes, that's a significant amount of, uh, of uh, homes that you're that you'll be studying. So how did you onboard uh, the customers? How did you get them engaged uh, to, to participate? Well, the wonderful part of, uh, of this research piece is that it actually originated in the town of Shediac. The town created its own vision document and shared it with uh, with the members of the community. And so when we uh, when we were lucky enough to receive federal research funding to pursue this project, there was already a base of support and understanding in the community. So uh, we had a few uh, community meetings where we took folks through what our overall goals were. And then over the course of the summer of 2019 and early fall, we started a recruiting drive through through Facebook and other traditional media. And we had people sign up uh, to be part of the study through, through that process. And uh, really it's been about helping them understand the complexities, helping them understand that um, not everybody's gonna get solar and battery and that we want to test some different technologies here. Uh, we're even going to have a baseline group, uh, and so uh, you know that particular group uh, is, is just going to uh, go on their merry way. So, so we needed that baseline group, and we had to help people understand why why we needed that, and what role they would play, and what benefit they would get from being part of it. So, you know, it's a really holistic. Uh, community-wide approach to uh, helping folks in the community understand what our overall goals are uh, and really playing on community pride and wanting to be that first community in particular in New Brunswick and perhaps here in Atlantic Canada to, to really dive into renewables and DERS and, and help the utility understand and, and potentially solve a lot of the really complex problems that we know we're going to uh, to have to solve as uh, as this evolution in DERS uh, continues to accelerate. And you said uh, evolution in DERS and really understanding the technologies and, and the customers. So um, as we approach um, or get closer to net zero by 2050, how will the needs of your customers um, evolve from now until then, do you think? Well, I think that um, as a utility, we're going to have to match their desire. So if their desire is really to be more renewable, to be more resilient and, and self-sufficient, to have their own energy capacity, energy generating capacity and storage capacity in their own home, then utilities, we need to understand that uh, we're, we're, we're either going to be a potential provider of those solutions or we're obviously gonna be the grid operators that help uh, manage and optimize them both for say customer benefit and for our own benefit. 
Um, so, you know, understanding how we evolve as utilities to, to uh, meet those uh, changing customer expectations of us. I mean, what we've seen in Shediac already is a level of need from the customer base for support from the utility that, that really, um, you know, could dwarf or overwhelm our capacity as a utility to provide it. And that is support with these smart energy devices and uh, understanding how they can be optimized and, and best used to, to home benefit and, and those kinds of things. And, and also just simply in, in um, helping, us un, helping customers understand uh, the interconnections between these devices and things in their homes. We, we tell a classic story of one of our previous projects where uh, a customer uh, had called us after we installed a device in their house and their toilet had been flushing um, uh, very weirdly in the time since we'd been in the home and they wanted to know why. Uh, why we were flushing their toilet so often. <laughs> and um, clearly one had nothing to do with the other, but it, did, it it was a good cautionary tale and a good learning piece for us that, um, you know, we're installing these technologies in homes and uh, they're brand new and people really don't understand what, uh, what their intention is or how they're being used. And, and there's just gonna be a lot more support. And as a utility, we need to be a lot better at uh, providing that service for our customers. Well, that's quite uh, that's quite the coincidence that when you installed those technologies, they had issues with their plumbing at the same time. <laughs> so, makes for a good story. Pardon? Yeah, makes, makes for a good story. <laughs> good learning opportunity there. Yeah, definitely. So NP Power is really becoming a partner, an integrated partner more within the community, really at um, through this study, really at an intimate level. Um, so I, f I find that's, uh, that's really interesting as well. So as we see more of these smart energy communities in Canada in the future, um, you know, so you just mentioned uh, one learning there about the support. Um, is there, are there any other learnings that, you've, um, that you have to share? Well, I think that, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's so much we've learned already and, and, and so many ways in which we recognize that we need, need to continue to evolve. I think that the learnings are that the desire uh, significantly outweighs the capability. So what I mean by that is, is that the desire for communities to, to have these options, to take advantage of federal funding, to, to deploy their own large scale solar farms or battery storage to offset their own costs, to create more resiliency in their community to position themselves as, as uh, green or smart energy communities, you know, worthy of investing in and worthy of moving to. I mean, we're, we're the, this kind of movement and evolution in DERS and, and renewables is very much tied to um, economic development, obviously, and, and positioning of communities. I know one thing here in Atlantic Canada, in fact, in Shediac, what we're seeing in this kind of COVID period is a significant group of people from uh, outside the Atlantic bubble uh, looking to move to, to New Brunswick. And, uh, you know, Shediac is using this project and, and its desire to be a smart energy community of the future and a very renewable community as a lure to draw professionals from say Ontario to, to move here by property and, and, and live here and work from here. So, so um, we're all part of, uh, of something, you know, uh, an, an evolution in the industry, obviously, but that evolution is tied, like every evolution in an industry, it's tied to societal change too. And, and um, you know, the, the expectations on utilities in terms of, stakeholder relationships and customer management and and the ability to explain um, say infrastructure investments and how all this ties together the the expectation on us is 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 intense if it wasn't already intense yeah. our ability to communicate and and speak to these things is is only uh, expanded exponentially hmm. that's interesting you said about covid that it's a draw for people to move to Shediac because of the renewable uh, initiatives that are taking place there. I find that, uh, and, and people can work anywhere, right? So I find that uh, that's quite an interesting and significant learning as well. 
and as you said, ties into the uh, economic development of Atlanta, Canada, and, and the region, and and really that you know the town is at at the cutting edge of uh, so much that um, that's important uh, for people now, given um, people's des desire for uh, renewable energy and um, you know shifting to a greener economy and things like that. So, um, one question: what what is the one word you would use to describe electricity? Underappreciated. Underappreciated. Very good. Thank you so much, Brent, for your time today. It was great chatting with you about this uh, super interesting project and really learning, uh, interested to learn more about uh, the results as, uh, as it moves forward. Well, thanks. It's, it's great to be here and great to be talking about Shediac and uh, hope to talk to you more about it in the future when we have yeah. some results. Great job. Thanks.